So welcome to another of NC's NaNoWriMo blogs and the first ever video blog that I'm actually going to post on the internet. Did I actually think this through, considering I have a huge zip right there? Right. So, first off, what exactly is NaNoWriMo? If you are one of the few people in the internet universe who actually check out Amantel Vivery, that's my blog on Blogger. Uh, I'm going to leave the URL in the description box at the bottom of this thing. Um, NaNoWriMo is the mythical, legendary event that happens every November that if you are criminally insane and a writer, or even if you don't really think you're a writer but you're just criminally insane, you might think of joining. You have to write 50,000 words in 30 days. That's 1,667 words per day for 30 days throughout the month of November, which for the most of us is actually a pretty busy month. I mean, it is the month before Christmas. So you're considering you have to fit Christmas shopping, grocery shopping, every little bit of detritus in your actual life with sitting in front of a screen for about, say, three hours a day, that's an optimistic estimate, and typing out fiction creating. For a college student who goes to a university that is aptly known as the University of Abundant Papers, adding 1,667 words to my daily word count, which is considerable because I am now a senior, is slightly more insane than usual. But I'm doing it anyway. Why am I doing it anyway? Uh, I was actually working on my marketing management plan, which is a really awesome class. And it was pretty much 4 a.m. and I knew I wasn't going to sleep and so I had to take a mental break and started shopping pictures on uh, my computer. Actually, I didn't really shop them. I used pages and just added text because I'm not that good at digital design. And while I was, you know, editing pictures in PicMonkey, which is my favorite uh, picture editing site, and adding text on them in pages, I came up with this format that looked something like a book title, a book cover, and I was like, hmm, okay, this looks like a really nice photo to make into a book cover, let's just add a title. Problem is, what title? Uh, since I was wearing some sort of train engineer cap in the picture, it was my picture, I came up with the title, The Last Train Out to Sea, and that title just, you know, made zing happen in my head, and I was like, that's a really, really, really good title. Let's make a pretentious 50,000 word novel to go with it. Is it pretentious? Ah, uh, let me read you a part of the novel. So incidentally, my current word count as of November 11 at 1.03 a.m., I should be asleep right now, is 20,899. That's dangerously close to 21,000. Let's read an excerpt of this uh, novel and see if it is actually pretentious. Subject, subject to the whims of my parents' nomadic lifestyle, I had seen what I believed to be a good cross-section of schools in America, from the exclusive, cozy, uniform-wearing academy that claimed to want to build families with its students, to the maddening zoo of the public school system with its own classifications of humanity. The common and or garden American cheerleader, the stoner, the emo, not to be confused with its close cousin, the goth, they were all different, sometimes drastically so. Fremont Academy in Tidewell, VA, featured a meditation garden with gentle Alexander Calder-esque sculptures, where introduction to art classes were held, while Douglas Benedict High School in Brushwood, Texas, the heart of Northern Texas, also known as Ground Zero for Tornado Alley, had a giant panic room underneath its parking lot and had a set of art classes, weekly storm drills. But despite the huge variety that existed between the different entities in the American school system, there were always there was always something they all had in common. It was very, very easy to disappear in them. I think it's very obvious that the verbosity of that novel really is just to get to 50,000 words in 30 days. Admittedly, a lot of what you produce during this month is utter crock. And sometimes you cry. I have literally cried and, and, and contemplated poisoning myself over this. But it helps. Like, it strangely does help. Midway through the month, and I'm hoping this kicks in soon, you start creating things that aren't so much crock as they are kind of good. I guess it's a lot of, like, you know, vocal cords. You have to warm them up first before they actually start producing sounds that sound human. That's pretty much been my pattern of nanorama experience ever since I started doing this. And I started doing this six years ago when I was about... Not six years ago. I've been doing it six times. I didn't necessarily do it six years, and I can't remember when I started doing NaNoWriMo, but I know I was a very young teenager. Yeah, I probably was 12. And 
Although a lot of what I produced was questionable, especially the first time I ever joined, that was ridiculous. There were moments that were kind of good. And this year, while there are painful chapters full of abject verbosity, there are also chapters where I actually think what I'm writing isn't half bad. I mean, it's not John Green level, which to me is a standard for first-person narration, especially if you've read The Fault in Our Stars, which I'm reading right now just to kind of, you know, figure out the genius. But it's not utter crock, I think it's salvageable, and if I actually get around to editing it, maybe it's publishable. I don't even want to think of the word publishable, especially when it comes to my novels, because I'm supposed to try and edit my last NaNoWriMo novel where I won, which is 2010's Ghost Daughter, but I haven't even gotten around to doing that yet, so let's not count my chickens before they're hatched. Especially when we're pretty sure they're no, chickens. So there, that's my uh, NaNoWriMo update from the front lines of the battlefield, and it is now currently day 11. I am advanced! Yay! But I think two days worth of word count that can change with my 7.30 classes and my voice lessons, which are awesome. I love them, by the way. My teacher, Jai Sabas Arahama, basically told me that I have to completely reevaluate how I talk and how I sing. And I have never been so happy to have my voice built from the ground up because, just so you know, I'm auditioning for Miss Saigon. So this could be the face of your next GG. Probably not, but, you know, a girl can dream, right? <laughs> no, I'm not even saying Kim because I don't even want to count that chicken. So there. And uh, it's a pretty fruitful experience. And wow, it's already 1 a.m. I should be asleep. So I'm going to end it here. Thanks, universe, and thank you for watching this pointless, pointless ramble in my dressing room. So, yeah. Night! Let's just cut that out.